Hi, I'm Steve DiFilippo, and I'm owner of Davios, and I'm out taking a walk with my old friend Buzz Knight. Buzz, you look pretty good, man. This is really fun to be out on the streets with you. We're not going to get arrested or anything, right? We're all, we're all, it's very safe, right? Am I safe with you? Very safe. Okay, good. Welcome to Taking a Walk, an excursion to converse, connect, and catch up at a cool location with some of the most interesting people you can find. Here's Buzz Knight. Well, Steve, it is so good to actually see you in person <laughs> yes. and to be taking a walk with you. Thank you. Yeah, well, you know, it's this whole COVID thing is it's so nice. We're not wearing masks. We're, like, hanging out together, walking down the street. It's uh, two old friends. So, so in the future now, let's refer to it as that thing. In other words, we're all tired of the name. So, you know, I should have uh, pre-warned you that we don't want to use that name on this uh, Taking a Walk podcast. Yes. But yes, so we'll thing. just refer to it vaguely in the, yeah. in the future. And, and you don't have to ask me how's business been. <laughs> you know, people, they come into the restaurant, right? And they go, you know, obviously they know I own all these restaurants all over the place. And they go, so Steve, how's it been? I go, seriously? How's it been with the thing for two years? Right. How, how, how do you think it's been? It's been two years of yeah. the most difficult time. You know, and I've gone through, you know, this is 36 years of owning Davios. You know, I started in Uber Street in 85, back when you had brown hair. Uh, and, and, you know, we, <laughs> and I've been through recessions. I've been through presidents getting shot. I've been through, obviously, terrorism with planes going to buildings. I, you know, I've been through it all. And nothing even comes close to what we've had to go through. And we're still in it. We're not even far from done with this thing. How are your people? Uh, well, the people we have left are doing great. It's just we need more people. I think what happened is people keep asking me that question, where did everybody go? And I think a lot of people aren't working 80 hours a week anymore. You know, they realize that, you know what, quality of life, you know, I can get by if I work 40 or 50 hours. And, and so I think a lot of people who did those double shifts aren't doing it anymore. Uh, and we lost some people to Florida, let's face it. People went down south and uh, people retired too, you know. So it's kind of a combination of, of many reasons, I think, why we're short people right now. So let's move on to uh, even better things, okay? Mm -hmm. And I just, first of all, had never tried the um, uh, Awaken 180 yes. yeah. menu. I had a lovely uh, zucchini with shrimp, zucchini noodles. It was fabulous. Yeah, because it gives you the feeling that you're eating pasta, but you're actually eating noodles. Because uh, so the whole 180 thing is actually quite interesting. I uh, they approached me. Oh my goodness, it's probably three years now uh, to get involved with them. They wanted me to be a spokesperson for, for this weight loss program here in Boston, and uh, I had had friends who had did, did it and they did really well with it so uh, I, they came in and I said well if I'm going to do it if I'm going to be your spokesperson I need to do the program so I did the program and I lost 35-40 pounds three years ago and I kept it off uh, and then we started doing a, a menu for the restaurant uh, and now we have this great menu where you come in and there's no carbs there's no there's no sugar uh, it's it's really a very very healthy menu and it's, it's actually done really well uh, I never thought I would be on radio or TV talking about uh, weight loss being in a restaurant business, but it's actually been really good for our brand and it's been really good for me personally. Well, you look fabulous. Yeah, dare, you. dare I say, <laughs> o almost boyish. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I'm definitely no, not no, boyish. Look, no. I'm look. a grandfather now. I'm not boyish, but uh, no, it's, you know, I run every, you know, it's funny. I, I always thought I was healthy, but, uh, you know, I, I really would run a lot. I would try to eat right and I was just eating the wrong things and I just had a, a little correction. You know, I had to just stop eating certain things and now um, I'm doing fine with it. Well, what I think is cool about it though is I think, you know, the power of partnerships for brands is really important for, for brands, as you know. So the ability to merge with another, not merge literally, but to, you know, collaborate with a brand to help their brand, to help your brand, I think is really yeah. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, well, I spent a lot of time with Paige uh, Lopez, who owns 180, and I was concerned about that. It's funny you bring that up because when you do have that perception that you are part of another brand and they go down or they do something negative, or bad, they can hurt your brand. So uh, I was concerned about that because I had never gone and talked about. I, I mean, I, as you know, I've been doing a lot of radio and TV for you know all the Today Show. I've been on shows all over the place. My book came out. You know, I've done a lot of things, but it was about me. You know, it was about Davios. I controlled the narrative. Right. This is the first time I've actually gone out and tried to help another company. 
And I was concerned because I'm like, you know, what if these people are frauds, right? I don't know. What if this thing didn't work? And I got to tell you, it really works. And, it, and, it, and they've had over 20,000 people on the program here in Massachusetts, which is phenomenal. They've, they've done well. Uh, and uh, so that, I kind of lucked out, you know, because they're really good people. Now they've grown to like seven or eight locations. So he's had one when I started. That's great. Yeah. So the podcast is called Take It a Walk. Yeah. And we're uh, right near Davio's here in the Park Plaza area. So how do you use Take It a Walk to kind of, um, you know, break you out of a mood you might be in or, you know, just release or, you know, just enjoy yourself. How do you do it? Well, actually, I do that every morning. I actually go running. Uh, I run anywhere from five to eight miles every morning. And that's my release. I have to do it. If I don't do it, I'm grouchy. Uh, I, I, it, it's, it's more than just a, a weight thing. Because, you know, if you go run every day and then go have a pizza and three beers, you're not really doing anything. So, I do it for my release, and you know sometimes I go for a walk too. You know, especially in the weekends with with the dogs, and just you know I live up on the beach. So, I, to me, uh, you know, I'm an outdoor person. You know, I, you know, it's not like I don't go hunting or anything. I just like being outside. I don't go fishing. I don't do any of that stuff. I like to ski, I, but I, I, you know, I love to ski. I love to be outdoors. I like the beach. I like to go for walks and running. Uh, and and if I don't, it, you know, it, it really affects me. Like during the whole thing that we've had the last couple of years. Uh, it was tough, you know, to... I like do, how you did that, the to thing. Do, to do the thing, yeah. To do a lot of what we've always been doing, uh, you know, w- was very difficult. Like, you know, it was hard to go skiing. You know, it was hard to do things that uh, I think kept us going in, in what we love to do. And I think that's why a lot of people got grouchy. And I think a lot of people are just still in a bad mood. It's like, it's kind of frustrating. And I think it's time for us to move on, you know. And I know we have another variant. We have other things coming at us. You know what? We've dealt with a lot of problems in this country. We can deal with this. Let's keep going. Let's let's stop this craziness and be so negative. Let's be positive and enjoy our, our life, you know, and and let's get going. You know, I, I'm just so tired of, like, the negativity. Yeah, and I feel that, uh, I know me personally, I rediscovered the outdoors because I was always working five days a week, and maybe on the weekends I go with my wife and the dog. Is that when you do like the that? bow, the, 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 the bells, the cowbells? The cowbell. You, you do cowbells, right? More on the cowbell. Weekends, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one of my favorite things was uh, when I was uh, uh, working programming there with Greater Media and ultimately uh, uh, Beasley as well. I would <laughs> I would get a text or a call from Steve. When WROR used yeah, to do yeah. something called a More Cowbell Weekend, oh, right? So drive me crazy. And, <laughs> I was like, really? How many times are I gonna hear these cowbells? I, was like, I didn't really understand it. Like, I guess I, I, I don't know. It's some rock and roll thing, or back in the '60s or something. What, what, well, you know, it's from it's from obviously the the Saturday Night Live bet with Will Ferrell, and. Basically, yeah, there's cowbells and songs, and it was just another way to showcase uh, <laughs> old music. I <know. laughs> but I used to get the call or the text, and you used to just crack me up with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad we moved on from that. I haven't heard a cowbell in a while, so well, I, think, I think they finally moved on. Yeah, well, we've had our, our share of uh, serendipitous moments, I would say, yeah. throughout you our know, uh, know, our relationship. I know you're asking me the question, but I want to ask you a question. Of so, course. So on the weekends on with radio, is it because people don't, listen to the radio on the weekend why is it there's always like promotions the week they, they they're always talking about doing stuff on the weekends like, what, what, why i think is that? people listen a little less on the oh, weekends right. so i think you need to kind of wake them up you oh, know and is? just kind of get them yeah because the monday through friday grind is one thing obviously yeah. i think that's changed since the thing as yeah. well yeah, but yeah. i think the weekends there's different patterns so it's you got to remind them differently Huh, that's you know, interesting. Yeah. But, you know, I know it was always a ratings uh, bonanza for the more cowbell, so <laughs> that's where I... I don't think so. I said, Steve, <laughs> do you know what ratings are? <laughs> yeah, I know what ratings are. Yeah. So take me back yeah. to the first restaurant. Um, that was Newbury, right? Yeah, so I started at Newbury Street, which is uh, right... That's kind of the fashionable street of Newbury Street, they say. Uh, that's where all the fancy stores are. And we were actually like the fifth block up. So we really weren't in the fancy block area, you know, back in the mid 80s when I started. You know, I, I went to Boston University and then I went to a chef school. Uh, and then I, Davio, as I started, I was 24 years old. I was I was a chef, the general manager, because I worked at Faneuil Hall. I went to Seaside and I, I really learned a lot there how to run a, a restaurant. And uh, I did everything there from being a busboy to being the head chef. So I, I was blessed that I worked at a great place. And I always tell people that, you know, 
find a mentor because I had great mentors, and that's kind of how I got started at, at 24. Uh, but when I started, I was just it was a very small restaurant. You know, we had about 15 people in the company. Uh, you know, I was the chef, the general manager. You know, and then after a while, I couldn't even be the chef because uh, it, it was it, it got a little busy. I mean, it, it, it's amazing. We took this little tiny restaurant that was doing a s small sales, uh, and then we started this cafe upstairs. And the cafe upstairs is really what, uh, in my opinion, made our brand with pizza and pasta and. David Bieber's onion rings. I mean, we really <laughs> changed the, the whole street. Nobody was doing gourmet pizza. You know, I went out to California and I went to Spago and I remember I, I had smoked salmon pizza. You know, I came from, my parents from Providence, you know, meatballs and chicken parm and stuff, you know. So I had never had anything like that and it just blew my mind. And we came back and I just started doing all these crazy pizzas and it just, it just took off. And then we started having all the guys hanging out from Aerosmith to, uh, you know, I mean, it was just crazy. The cars, you know, Rick Ocasek and David Robinson would be there all the time. In fact, one night, Paulina and Rick came in, and, and we, they go to pay, and he, he didn't have any money, you know? And I was like, okay, you effing zillionaire. You just sold out the garden for three nights. You don't have any, you know, it was the funniest thing. He goes, I'll be back tomorrow. I'm like, yeah. Okay. And he did. He came back. It was so funny. And he was so nice. And, and, I, and I just think about Peter Wolf and Seth Justman. And, uh, I mean, it just goes on and on. And then we were really good friends with the radio stations. And, you know, Ken Shelton and Charles Sacretary, you know, they would, and, and Mark Parento, all those guys from BCN, they would plan these dinners. You know, we had, oh my goodness, we had so many bands from Joan Chad and, uh, and my, probably, probably one of my favorite all time stories is Stephen Ray Vaughan. So he's, they're doing a night where he's going to take the whole fl second floor after a show. He's doing, I think he was playing at the Orphan. So after the show, he's going to come over, and we had this big menu planned for all the, the guests. Well, I got a call in the afternoon from his manager who says, you know, uh, Stevie's on a special diet and uh, he, he wants to eat this rabbit tonight. And so we have the rabbit here and do you mind if we bring it over? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> is this like Charles? Am I on the radio? <laughs> Am I being is, is this Glenn, you know, Glasscock? I go, is this serious? The guy goes, sir, who? I'm sorry, who, what, what who? He was like kind of insulted that I thought it was a joke. He goes, I'll see you in about a half hour. I said, okay. He comes over with this rabbit, not, it wasn't like a rabbit with ears, it was like a rabbit loin, okay? And I, it all wrapped up in packaging, and I was like, holy shit. Oh, can I just not swear on this thing? No, you can't. Okay, oh fuck, okay. So anyway, <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> so anyway, he breaks, so I get the rabbit, now I'm like, so I call my cooking teacher, I call Roberta Donnelly, and I said, Roberta, I got this rabbit thing, what do I, 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 because I, I never could eat rabbit, you know, I got rabbits all in my house, I just never eat that kind of thing. So she tells me how to do it, to braise it, da, 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 you know. So I, I cooked the thing, and he loved it. He was so nice. He was just, I'll never forget how much he loved the rabbit, and, and, his, and his people loved it, and everyone else had a great time. And as you know, unfortunately, about a year later, two years later, he's, he, you know, the helicopter thing. And uh, I never forgot that, you know. And I always thought, you know, someday he would have come back. You know, we'd make it, we'd made it again, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's gone, so. So, um... This particular Davio's, and of course the one on Newbury Street, and I'm sure your others, yeah, it's been a place where, you know, cool people, famous people, you know, of all walks of life have, have come through. Do you still get jazzed about meeting certain people that you've never run into, like, for the first time? Like, yeah. you know, like, does it, like, what kind of jazzes you in that regard? Well, I gotta tell you, when Springsteen came in for the first time, that was, you know, I'm a huge, as you know, I'm a huge Springsteen fan. That, that was quite amazing you know and he had knew me because i have friends with you know his mem uh, band members um they used to come in and uh, wayne lebeau his managers and you know all these people and uh, i used to bring spring rolls and he calls me the philly cheesesteak spring roll guy you know, he calls me the spring roll guy when he sees me you know so i he, he kind of knows me but not really knows me you yeah know? uh he knows davios obviously because his son went to bc and so he would come in with his wife and they were really nice um but i gotta tell you we, we have a lot of sports guys that come in too you know we from jeter we you know, I, 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 in my book, I talk about all the, a lot of these people, and uh, you know, it's it's just a it's just a cool thing, you know. And we, uh, and I'll just I'm th I'm thankful that they like the restaurant, and, and, and you know, from Tom Brady to whoever, uh, and it's great for the guests, you know, it's great for the people that work here, our inner guests, uh, and it's just it's just good for the brand, you know, when you, when they have that happening, uh, and I, and it's it's just fun. Yeah, yeah, I remember when the 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 convention was here. You had a bunch of the... Uh, the senators? The senators yeah, here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually had 61 senators here. 
61 U.S. senators. Wow. You know, and President Biden was there. He was there that night. I mean, he obviously wasn't a president then. So I always think people say, has there ever been a president been to the obvious? Oh, yeah, Biden's been in, you know. Even though he was a senator, he came, he came three times. And uh, he never was the president then. But uh, So I kind of, it's one of those gray area things. You know, when you're an author, you make up stuff. You know, yeah. So. <laughs> If you, if we don't call it make it up. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, uh, you're, you're right as a writer. <laughs> exactly, you exactly. Know? Yeah. So talk about yeah. the book uh, sure. and uh, specifically the motivation for well, the book. Well, it's called It's All About the Guest. And, uh, you know, I talk about the history of, of the company and the brand and everything. But when you hear it's all about the guest, most people think it's about the guest who walks through that front door. And, yes, we talk a lot about the outer guest. But my whole passion in the Davio's way is about the inner guest, which is the employee's. We don't call them employees at Dobbins. We call them inner guests. And we treat everyone amazingly well. That's why we still have people with us 30 years, 35 years. Uh, and I always felt if you took care of everyone who came in through that back door as well as the front door, you're going to do pretty well because that's 100% of the equation. So I talk a lot about what we do for our guests, inner guests, uh, and I talk about the Davio's way and I uh, give the whole history lesson. And I do a lot of stories. The book is all about stories. And I, and I talk about mentors. I, I, I do a chapter on numbers. But you know, and his recipes. It's kind of a, it's a great book to really for any business. Like I do public speaking all over the country from, you know, Whole Foods has had me to car dealers to dry cleaning big company. I mean, it's amazing how many companies that I've, I've spoke to that weren't restaurants. In fact, I've probably done more non-restaurants than I have uh, other businesses and a lot of colleges as well, which I really enjoy doing. Uh, and so the book has really helped me with that. You know, it's, obviously it's got me on national TV and, you know, uh, writing a book is a lot of fun, and I really just wanted to uh, help people because I think when you read the book, you can, you know, it's just a helpful tool uh, for anyone who's in business. Like my landscaper, a okay, guy who does my lawn up in uh, when Wenham, he read the book. He's like, it ha changed his business, you know. So that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to help people and kind of because everywhere I go, people come up to me, want to know how how I did it, or they want to know about the restaurant and they don't, they don't understand how you know what happens with the food if they don't people don't buy it you know all these crazy questions and i kind of go through a lot of those kind of things so i'll be in stop and shop or a supermarket people come up to me and start asking me questions about the restaurant says so, you know i should put a book together and it took a couple years and a lot of work and you know i'm glad i did it and uh, i think you know it's we've sold a lot of them all over the place it's been a lot of fun i didn't do it to make money really i did it really just to help people and we have made money but it's not wasn't that wasn't my focus in fact i don't do anything but my focus was never about money. People ask me that question all the time. I I just have a passion for this business. I love the restaurant business, and I think any person who gets into any business, I don't care what you do, you better love it. Like you, you're obviously they're still doing this. You love what you do. I right? do. Yeah. And and, and, it, and it's that work, right? I love talking to people. Yeah, I love right. interviewing people. Yeah. I love you know the process of putting it together. Right. Even though this experience I'm learning it in different ways because it's not like I have six people right as you see my crew with me yeah well they're they're having lunch right now drinking <laughs> champagne at Davio's while we're out here on the sidewalk walking around. Yeah. but you know my, my whole point is just find your passion and, and you're gonna do great in life you know and don't worry about the money the money will come you know and that you know today unfortunately a lot of the kids always want to say well you know how much am I gonna make uh, oh how much time am I gonna have off when when does my vacation start like do I, can I get Sunday off? Like, all these like questions. So, like, we never asked these questions. Right. We're like, what time you want me there? You know, and we showed up. So know? when did you know this is really what you wanted to do? Well, when I was a little kid, I, I used to cook with my mom growing up, my Italian grandmother, my mom who's Portuguese, uh, working with her, and then my dad. You know, I was just blessed. My dad was this incredible businessman, ran this huge company. So I had this like hybrid kind of life. I was uh, cooking with my mom, and then I had my father, who was this great businessman. So he was always teaching me to pay attention and to. And what was his business? It's called Uniforce. It's an industrial uniform company, very large company. My uncle owned it. Um, my dad was the president. My uncle um, Aldo was the CEO. And then my brother's in the company. He's still there. Uh, a lot of my cousins are in the company. It's a huge company all over the country, and, and actually, Canada, Mexico, Europe. I mean, it's a, it's a two billion dollar company. Uh, and it's not something that I, it wasn't two billion obviously years ago, it's grown so much in the last 25 years. But I, uh, wasn't, it wasn't my passion, I, I love the business, I think they do an amazing job. I was a restaurant guy as a little kid, I, I always loved to serve, like when my parents would go away and I would, my, I would be the cook, I was a 10 year old cook in the, in the kitchen, my brother and sister, I would make them breakfast in the morning, I would, I would get dinner together, I mean, it was just what I would do, it was like, you know, they would always say, Stevie, what are we having for dinner tonight? I'm like 11 years old, 10 years old, I'm like this little kid, you know, and it, 
you know, I was destined to do this, you know. Yeah. And, and people say, you know, I'm 61 now. My daughter just had a baby last week. People keep saying to me, you know, it's been 36 years. When are you getting out of this thing? Because a lot of my friends have sold. They've moved on uh, in this business. And, 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 I, and I really um, have no intention to ever leave because I think... I don't know what else I would do, actually, you know? Uh, I think they're going to take me out of here in a box someday because I'm just not going anywhere. I mean, honestly, I just can't wait to be in any, you know, today, I, this is my third Davios today. I mean, I, I just, it's what I do, you know? And I, and I love it so much. And I, you know, it's harder, I must say, because of that thing. It's been tough. But uh, we're going to get through it. We're Americans. We're tough. And we have, we're just a resilient group, you know? And we will get through this. So let's talk about 2022 on a final note what are you most looking forward to about 2022 i i am looking forward to hopefully some people will start working more again i think because of that thing i think people have kind of got used to not working as much you know i think a lot of people that i know used to work 70 hours a week and working 35 hours a week 40 hours a week um, I, I'm looking forward to people not being home as much and being more in the office. I'm um, looking forward to people traveling more and, and the hotels to be back to be more conventions and just getting back to, you know, I mean, we live in Boston. It's, a, it's such a great city. But, I mean, here we are walking down the street here, Buzz, and you don't really see a lot of people, which right. normally, uh, you know, you would see a lot more people yep. around. And I'm looking forward to 22 that we put this thing behind us and, and we're not going to let it beat us. You know, I think some people have just let it take over their life and they have to stop this madness okay we've had aids for 40 30 years we've had we've had a lot of crazy things happen to us and we just move on for some reason no one wants to move on with this thing it's time to move on i'm sorry you know look i i lost a brother-in-law i'm not saying it's a very real thing i've had three vaccines i'm i'm like you know i've got shots everywhere okay I, i'm i'm yeah. i'm not against any of it yeah but it's you know yeah. be safe and move on. Yeah, and okay. lead a lead a life. Yes, right. Yes, we, and, we lead a life. And exactly. you know what? Leading a life where I get to come and talk to cool people and cool locations like you, hook up with old friends, have an amazing lunch. Boy, a lot to be grateful for. Right? Aren't we? We are grateful people, yeah. and I think some people just want to be sad. Yeah. Let's stop being sad. Let's keep going. You know, like they were all like, oh, you know, this year Thanksgiving, that thing's gonna make all these people, you know. I'm like, oh my goodness. They're trying to get people not to get together again for Thanksgiving. It was just making me great. You know what? And we were packed. It was the busiest Thanksgiving we ever had ever. We did not as much to go as we did last year. It was very small to go. It was The restaurants were just sold out. And that was a great sign for yeah. 22. Yeah. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you for your friendship. Thank and you thank you for all the great times. You know what? We should have had a cowbell to end the episode. That's what, <laughs> bang. I, you know, that, was, you know, that would have been fun. Maybe we'll put some extra production yeah. on there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Nice seeing you. Taking a Walk with Buzz Knight is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.